Hi guys! In today's video, we'll be making this Medusa inspired doll repaint. I've been thinking about doing this type of doll for a while, so I was really happy when some of you guys started requesting it. I decided on giving Medusa a snake tail as well as snake hair, but obviously that's up to you. Let's get started. For this project, I'll be using this Claire Denial doll, which I bought second hand online. When I first received it, I started by removing the hair because it was really tangled and gross, but then I realized that one of the legs was actually broken. I still kept the doll thinking that it might be good for a character that didn't need its legs, for instance Medusa, so that's why we're using it. Firstly, we're gonna make her new hair. For this, I took a piece of tin foil, covered the head completely, then I took some polymer clay, wrote it out in a thin sheet, and then spread this on top of the head to create a polymer clay wig cap of sorts. Once I had the hair portion covered, then I took my uh, beat up old hair dryer and I used the heat of this to set the surface to harden the clay just a bit so I could still work on it without me shaping it. Then you want to form the snakes from polymer clay. Using a bit of liquid clay to stick the snakes on, you want to start adding them to the wig cap. I covered the rest of the doll in tin foil too. So I can arrange the snake onto her body without getting in contact with the actual plastic of the doll. Once I had all the snakes attached and arranged, I used the hairdryer again to gently set them so I could slide the doll's head out from under the tin file and then carefully bake it completely according to packet instructions. Once baked, you can remove the tin file and try it on your doll. And here's how it looks. Put it aside for now. Next we want to remove the broken leg as well as the bottom part of the other leg. Then I used a few pieces of masking tape to stick the legs together. Now you want to take a big chunk of polymer clay and start forming the tail. Then you want to cover the bottom of the doll in tin foil. Then you want to cut a slit at the top of the tail and start working it around the doll, smoothing it out. Arrange the tail however you like so the doll can sit slash stand up. Then you want to carefully open the tin for a little bit and slide out the doll. Out 
After baking, you can add a few details. And here's the finished sculpt of the tail. Bake it completely and then set it aside. For her top, I covered the doll in tin foil again and then cut out two shapes of polymer clay and fit these to the body. Once cooled, I paint them using alcohol ink in a gold color and then I seal it in with a bit of glaze. Before we start assembling the doll, we're going to do the actual repaint. So take a bit of nail polish remover containing acetone and remove the factory paint of the face. Then I prime the face using the Mr. Super Clear spray before using my watercolor pencils, chalk pastel and a bit of alcohol ink for the repaint. I start by placing in the eyes, trying to get them as symmetrical as I can. She's not gonna have a defined iris, since the whole eye is going to be one color. For the eyebrows, I sketch them out using a bit of chalk pastel, which I can erase easily before going over it with a pencil. To shade, I used a bit of chalk pastel in a green, which I usually don't do, but I wanted to give her skin sort of a greenish undertone. I used the metallic looking alcohol ink to fill in the entire eye, but you could also use acrylic paint. And this is how far we got in the first layer. Then I sprayed the doll again with the Mr. Super Clear spray and started working on top. I shade the corners of the eyes using black chalk pastel to make the eye look rounded. I darkened the general shading of the face with a dark brown pastel going on top of the green. Time for another spray. I used the watercolor effect of my pencil for more defined color. I used a light skin colored pencil for highlights since I think the white would be too harsh. I 
I use my white pencil on a wet brush to add the final white highlights of the eyes and then she's ready for our final spray. I glaze the eyes and lips using a water-based glaze, but that's optional. Then we can start assembling the doll, starting by gluing on the chest pieces. I add a jump ring on top for a bit of additional detail and using a bit of copper wire to wrap around the wrists for cuffs. Now for the tail. You're gonna need a bit of air dry clay to connect the doll to the tail and make it a smooth transition. It's important that it's air dry because you won't be able to bake the doll. Use a bit of water to smooth out the clay and then allow it to dry. Now we can paint the tail using acrylic paint. Seal in the paint with a bit of glaze and then paint the wig. For the eyes of the snakes I use some yellow rhinestones. Seal it in with glaze and then we're ready to put the doll together. And here's our finished doll. So far, this was the biggest modification I've ever made on a doll, and it was really fun. If you have any requests for future repaints, be it fairy tale creatures, monsters, characters, whatever, do leave them in the comments below, because I really like to hear. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in a new one real soon. Bye!